Today, I'm going to be talking about a real disorder that affects up to 8% of the population, which is called fibromyalgia. I'm Dr. Ammon Hills. I'm a pain management physician practicing at Alpine Orthopedic Specialists in Northern Utah. Part of my practice is treating all types of pain and coming up with ways to provide meaningful pain relief to help improve function and get people back to doing the things that they love to do. I'm dealing with patients with chronic pain every day and some of those patients have pain all over their body and sometimes this may be caused by fibromyalgia. Today I'm sharing with you 10 things you need to know about fibromyalgia. Number one, patients with fibromyalgia can have many different symptoms that occur with this disease, but the two most common symptoms are chronic widespread pain and also severe fatigue. It is very common when I see a patient with fibromyalgia for them to say they have pain just everywhere. And also they're so tired and they have this fatigue where it's hard to even function throughout the day. Number two, this is an incredibly common disorder. So this is second only to osteoarthritis among the rheumatologic diseases. There's up to 5 million adults in the United States who are diagnosed with fibromyalgia. This can be diagnosed at all ages. Number three, 80 to 90% of people with fibromyalgia are gonna be women or female. Although we will occasionally see this among children and men, but definitely more common among females. I definitely see this in my practice where the majority of patients that come in are female, but I will also see males as well with fibromyalgia. Number four, how do we diagnose fibromyalgia? We used to do this by checking tender points. The patient would need 11 of 18 tender points to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. In 2010, the American College of Rheumatology came up with more specific and detailed criteria to help us make this diagnosis. So these patients are in a lot of pain, but there's other things that are also affected. There's other symptoms that are also affected. And so this criteria helps us to check for those other symptoms. We still check to see if the patient has widespread pain and we're able to locate where that pain is. We're also able to see how long they've had these symptoms and how severe they are. So these symptoms need to be present for at least three months. We also need to make sure that there's no other diseases or causes that would explain their widespread pain. Number five, many people with fibromyalgia will have trouble with concentration and with memory. Sometimes this is referred to as a brain fog or fibro fog. And if you think about it, this can be extremely frustrating for patients. When patients are trying to function throughout the day, it's really difficult if they can't concentrate. It makes it hard for them to do their job, take care of their family, and do the things that they're just trying to do. Although patients will have difficulty with their memory and concentration problems, there's also other symptoms they may experience, such as headaches, temporal mandibular joint disorder or TMJ pain, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome, and even back or neck pain. Number six, what is the cause of fibromyalgia? It's often very difficult to pinpoint a cause of fibromyalgia. We know there's sometimes multiple factors that may be associated with this, such as injury, trauma, or hereditary genes. In fact, we know that Family history does play a strong role in developing fibromyalgia. They did one study where patients with a family history of fibromyalgia were eight times as likely of developing fibromyalgia than the control group. Another study where they looked at twins suggests that up to 50% of the risk of developing fibromyalgia is genetic and 50% environmental. When patients come in with fibromyalgia, sometimes it's not obvious when this started. Sometimes it can just gradually occur over time and that's very frustrating for patients to not understand why this is happening to them. Number seven, exercise is an incredibly important part of the treatment of fibromyalgia. Try to incorporate strengthening, stretching, aerobic exercises as part of the treatment for fibromyalgia. Being overweight or obese may trigger fibromyalgia, but maintaining a healthy weight will help to control these symptoms. Number eight, what medications are used to treat fibromyalgia? There are three FDA approved medications to treat fibromyalgia. Pregabalin or Lyrica, Duloxetine or Cymbalta, and Vilnacipran or Civella. Although there's three FDA approved medications, we also use additional medications other than these if they're not working. Now these medications are prescription and so you will need to get a prescription from your doctor in order to try some of these treatments. Number nine, is there a fibromyalgia diet? 
Although there's not a fibromyalgia diet, there are some foods that may help reduce the symptoms associated with fibromyalgia. So eating a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids may be helpful in reducing some of your pain. Some examples of foods that contain fatty acids include salmon, flaxseed, walnuts, and olive oil. If you can't tolerate these foods, you can also try omega-3 fatty acid supplements or fish oil supplements. And number 10, if you have other chronic pain conditions, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, you may be at increased risk for developing fibromyalgia. So that completes our list of the 10 facts you need to know about fibromyalgia. My recommendations are eat healthy, stay active, get good sleep, and if you're still having issues, go see your healthcare provider for additional treatment recommendations. If you have any comments about fibromyalgia, please leave them below so we can help you out further. If you want to see more of my videos about chronic pain, check out this video right here. And I'll see you guys next time.